Hey what's up guys, in this video I'm gonna show you how to do simple floating combat text with damage numbers like you could see in World of Warcraft, Fortnite and many other games. So first thing we are gonna need to create is we are gonna need a widget for our numbers. So right click in our content browser, user interface, widget blueprint and user widget. I'm gonna call this VB floating number. And then we can open it. In here, what we want to do first is we want to change it from fill screen view to desired. So in the top right corner right here, click on the fill screen and change it to desired. Then we want text. So in the palette under common, we are gonna just drag it in. And this is gonna be our damage numbers. So any visual changes to your combat text, you can do in here in the details. So change the color, opacity, font, size, all that. I'm just gonna leave it as default here. The only thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna change the text from text block to let's say 999. So it better represents what we are going for. Then we need to turn it into variable because we are gonna work on it. So on the top side you have this checkbox next to the text is variable. So we want to check it. And then we want to compile this and we can go into the graph. In here we want to create two variables. So under variables click on plus. And the first one is gonna be called damage done. And then we want to change it to the type of float. Then we want to create a second one. And this one is gonna be called position. And we want to change this to the type of vector. Now we can delete these two events because we won't be needing them. Then we are gonna drag in our text, get it, drag from it and search for set text text. And plug it into the event construct. Drag in your damage done, get it and plug it into the text and Unreal is gonna automatically convert to text from float. Then we want to search for get player controller. Drag from it and search for project word to screen. Then we want to drag in our position variable, get it, and plug it into the word position. Then drag from the screen position, promote it to variable, and we can leave the name as is. Plug it into the set text, then drag from the screen position and search for set position in viewport. Then we want to get the delay, so hold down D on your keyboard and left click, and plug it into the set position. And then we want to drag from the completed and search for a remove from parent. Now we want to set the timer in the delay and this is gonna be the time that our text is gonna be on the screen. So you can change it based on whatever you want. I'm just gonna go with, let's say two seconds. And we're gonna go down below the event construct, right click and search for event stick. Then we are gonna right click and search for vector 2D interp2. Then we are gonna get our screen position variable, drag it in, get it. Then we are gonna drag from it and search for plus. Right click the pin and then split struct pin and then we want to drag from the X and search for a random float in a range. And you can change these variables to whatever you want. I'm just gonna go with minimal 10 and a maximum 50. And this is just so we have some variable between where the text will exactly appear around our target. Then we can drag the return value into both X and Y and then the result into target. And then from the screen position, we can drag it into current. Then in the event stake, we have the in delta time input. So we are going to drag that and drag it into the delta time. And then interrupt speed is basically going to be how fast it's going to move. I'm just going to set it to one, but you can obviously experiment with it however you want. Then we are going to get our screen position. And this time we are going to set it. Drag from the return value of the vector 2D and plug it in and then plug that into the event stake. Then we are going to drag from the set screen position and search for set position in viewport. And we can leave it like this. And one last thing we need to do here is we need to go into our variables. So select the damage done. And we need to change this so it's instance editable and exposed on spawn. And then the same thing with the position. That way we are going to be able to input the actual information into it. Then we can compile and save this and we can close this. Now you need to go into your anime blueprint. So for me, I have this anime dummy blueprint that I've been using for a couple of videos now. So in your anime blueprint, you want to go into the event graph, right click and search for event any damage. You probably already have some kind of damage system of your own, but you can just merge this with it as well. It basically just means you need to get an event that's gonna trigger any time you take damage, and then you need a way to tell how much damage has been done. So drag from the event any damage and search for create widget. Then slot in your widget that we created. So for me, that's floating number. And as you can see, we have these two variables now. If you don't have these here, then it either means that you didn't check them so they are instance editable and exposed on spawn, or this node is not updated, in which case you can just right click it and then click on a refresh nodes and then they should appear. To the damage done, we are just gonna plug in from event any damage and plug in our damage. And then for position, I'm gonna right click it and split struct pane. Then I'm gonna right click and search for get actor location. Then I'm gonna split that as well by right clicking on it and split struct pin. X and Y we can just plug in because that's gonna be the same. But for the Z axis value, I'm gonna drag out and search for add. 
And we want to add some value here because I want the numbers to be kind of above the enemy character. And you can obviously customize this number. I'm gonna go with about 200. That means it's gonna be right above our character. And then just plug that in into the position Z. Then from the return value, drag out and search for add to viewport. And now we can compile and save this. And that's all we need to do for the base system. So now when I'm in play mode and I attack my dummy, as you can see, we are spawning the text. But it's looking a little bit rough. And the reason for that is because usually when you have this kind of system, you also have an animation where it basically fades into the view. So if you just want this system and you are fine with this, you can just stop watching right here. But if you want to make it look a little bit better, I'm going to show you how to do that animation. So for that, we need to go and open our floating number widget again, go into the designer and we need to add animation so if you don't have animation window here you can go to window then animations and that's gonna open it right here so click on plus animation i'm gonna call this fade in then select it then we need to add a track so click on plus track all named widgets and then the text block then we just need to click on the plus and in here we want to select color and opacity then we want to click on this arrow to get more options and in here i'm gonna set the opacity to zero then click on this little plus that's gonna create our keyframe. And then you can move this wherever you want. I'm gonna go with 0.5, which means it's gonna fade in really quickly, but of course you can change it to whatever you want. So once you are at the time you desire, then you can just go and change the opacity back to one and then click on that plus again. Now, when I move this along the timeline, as you can see, we are fading in and back. So we can compare this, go into the graph, so in here under the event construct, after the set text, I'm gonna hold on left out and then click on the exact pin. That way it's gonna disconnect the link and I'm just gonna move these nodes to the side. Then we are gonna right click and search for play animation. And then we can just plug it in like this. And then we need to slot in our animation. So just get your animation, get it and plug it into the animation. And this is gonna take care of our fade in animation. But what if we want the numbers to fade out as well so there is not like a harsh cut there? Well, we can actually do it with the same animation. So we are gonna get the remove from parent, disconnect that and move it to the side. Then I'm gonna get the play animation and the fade in and duplicate it with control D. Plug it in after the delay. And then we need another delay. So hold on D on your keyboard, left click and plug it into the play animation. And then we can plug that into the remove from parent then in play animation node under the play mode we can change it from forward to reverse and that just means quite literally it's gonna play the animation in a reverse and then we can just change the delay and i'm gonna change it to whatever the animation length is so for me that's 0.5 second and that way it's gonna be removed after the animation plays and then we can just compile and save this and now when i punch my dummy as you can see the number kind of fades in and then after two seconds it starts fading out and then after those half seconds of animation it's just gonna get removed completely and you need that remove parent node there otherwise those numbers would just disappear visually but they will still be present and eventually would clog up your memory and it would just reduce your performance heavily so i hope you found this helpful if you did leave a like and subscribe it helps out a lot. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!